Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. Today I want to talk about a bit of Mormon lore that I don't hear brought up very often. The Mormon belief that the Garden of Eden from the Bible was in Missouri, and that when Christ returns in the Second Coming, that's where he'll come back to. Missouri, out of all places. <laughs> Now there's not like a ton of Mormon official documentation about this. Like obviously it started with Joseph Smith and was in the Doctrine and Covenants, but it's only been brought up a few times since then. And at least as far as I can tell, they haven't talked about it a lot recently. Most of the information I could find about it was either right after Joseph Smith had this revelation or up until like the 60s and 70s. There is a little primary lesson about it though. This is what it says. One day in May 1838, the prophet, Joseph Smith, and some other men were looking for places to build other cities for the saints to live in. They came to a place called Spring Hill where Joseph received another revelation. The Lord told Joseph that his name for Spring Hill was Adam on Diamon. Orson Pratt later said, this name means Valley of God where Adam dwelt in the original language spoken by Adam. Now this is funny to me because it says that this was from the Journal of Discourses, which a lot of times if you talk to Mormons, they'll be like, that's not official that's not like church sanctioned, the Journal of Discourses isn't like official, blah, blah, blah. But then they use it all the time in church lessons. They really, really like to cherry pick which parts of it to agree with and which parts of it are like doctrinal and which are not. According to Joseph Smith, Adam on Diamon is where God talked with Adam and the place where Adam offered up sacrifices to the Lord. Adam on Diamond will also be an important place in the future near the time of Christ's second coming. Adam will come again to Adam on Diamond and hold a great council. All the prophets who have held keys of priesthood authority on the earth will come to this council and give a report of their work to Adam. Jesus Christ will then come to Adam on Diamond and Adam will return the priesthood keys to him. Christ will then return to the earth to begin the millennium, the thousand years when Christ will live and reign over the earth. So like I said, I don't see very many people talk about this. When I was a member of the church and as a child, like I heard about this, um, I thought it was kind of common knowledge among other Mormons that when Christ returned, he would come to Missouri, um, to this place, Adam on Diamond. I even heard talk about like someday all of the Mormons would move to Missouri um, to be there. And, you know, I had talked with other friends, other Mormons about this. Um, it just seemed like something that most people knew about. But like I said, I haven't really heard many people talk about it since then. So I'm curious if you were raised Mormon, how much did you know about this? Um, did you hear talk about people moving there? Within my family and the people around me in Utah County, that kind of seemed like the thing. Like we all knew that someday for the second coming, Christ would return to Missouri and at some point before that, the saints would flock back there. Another important note is that in 1838, when Joseph Smith said that this is the place where Christ will return and this is the place where Adam met with God, they ended up dedicating an area there for the Adam on Diamond temple. But after the expulsion of the saints from their state, Missourians immediately swooped in to lay claim to the Mormon lands and improvements. Although they would go on to establish another covenant community and build a beautiful temple in Nauvoo, the saints maintained a hope that they would one day return to reclaim these sacred lands in Missouri prior to the second coming. In the last days, Adam, as a resurrected being, will come again to the place called Adam on Diamond, located in northern Missouri, USA. There he will again gather with others, including many other resurrected beings. Prophets who have held priesthood keys will deliver their keys up to Adam, who was the first to hold such keys and is the father of the human family on earth. He will then deliver the keys to Jesus Christ. This will be an important event to help prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ to all the world. Some of the most interesting lore about Adam on Diamond to me comes directly from different prophets and apostles. This is from Bruce R. McConkie. A lot of people, a lot of Mormons, seem to have a big problem with a lot of things that Bruce R. McConkie said, but he was an apostle in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. It's just funny to me that they like to pick and choose which parts of what certain apostles said were actually like prophetic and which were not. But anyway, this is what he said. Before any of his appearances, which taken together compromise the second coming of the Son of God, before all these, there is to be a secret appearance to selected members of his church. He will come in private to his prophet and to the apostles then living. Those who have held keys and powers and authorities in all ages from Adam to the present will also be present. And further, all the faithful members of the church then living and all the faithful saints of all the ages past will be present. 
It will be the greatest congregation of faithful saints ever assembled on planet Earth. It will be a sacrament meeting. It will be a day of judgment for the faithful of all the ages. And it will take place in Davies County, Missouri at a place called Adam on Diamond. That's a hell of a lot of people. It's gonna be a secret appearance. He'll come in private, but then there's gonna be like millions of people there. Charles Penrose, who was a less well-known member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, said this, the Lord will make an appearance at Adam on Diamon, the place where Adam shall come to visit his people or the ancient days shall sit. This grand council will be a large sacrament meeting, a time when the Son of Man will partake of the fruit of the vine once more with his earthly friends. And who will be in attendance? The revelations specify Moroni, Elias, John the Baptist, Elijah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Adam, Peter, James, John, and also, the Savior clarifies, all those whom my Father hath given me out of the world multitudes of faithful saints from the beginning of time to the end. This will be a private appearance in that it will be unknown to the world. Again, that's an awful lot of people <laughs> for a private, secret, unknown appearance, right? And then President Joseph Fielding Smith, a prophet, observed, this gathering of the children of Adam, where the thousands and tens of thousands are assembled in the judgment, will be one of the greatest events this troubled earth has ever seen. At this conference or council, all who have held keys of dispensations will render a report of their stewardship. We do not know how long a time this gathering will be in session or how many sessions will be held at this great council. It is sufficient to know that it is a gathering of the priesthood of God from the beginning of this earth down to the present, in which reports will be made and all those who have been given dispensations, talents, will declare their keys and ministry and make a report of their stewardship according to the parable. Judgment will be rendered unto them, for this is a gathering of the righteous. It is not to be a judgment of the wicked. This will precede the great day of destruction of the wicked and will be a preparation for the millennial reign. Elder Bruce R. McConkie, again, has likewise written, every prophet, apostle, president, bishop, elder, or church officer of whatever degree, all who have held keys shall stand before him who holds all the keys. They will then be called upon to give an account of their stewardships and to report how and in what manner they have used their priesthood and their keys for the salvation of men within the sphere of their appointments. And this is apparently a secret from everybody except those invited, which is every man who has ever held the priesthood in the Mormon church, ever. And the way I understood it as a Mormon was that after that, like the secret meeting, then Christ would come and, you know, appear to everybody, but that it would still take place in Missouri, like the official second coming. <laughs> a few years ago, the prophet of the Mormon church had said that there was gonna be this really like amazing general conference. Like it was, I think it was bicentennial, um, and it was like supposed to be a really big deal. So something like really, really interesting or cool was gonna happen. Like it was gonna be one for the ages. Um, and I heard from a lot of Mormons like a lot of people were speculating that like maybe this is it we're gonna start moving back to Missouri you know um, and I heard a lot of other things as well that was just like one of the speculations but I wondered that as well I was like wow that would be that would be like really big news right and then it ended up just being they did the Hosanna shout during general conference and that was it Hosanna 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 awkward and not quite as interesting as some huge overhaul where we're getting ready for the second coming. <laughs> and like I said, I haven't heard much of anything about Adam on Diamond since I was a young Mormon. What else have you guys heard? I want to know like how many people within the church know about this doctrine and what kinds of things did you hear about it when you were growing up in the church? Like what did your family say about it? What was the culture surrounding it? Because like I said, in my little bubble of a Mormon world, it was kind of common knowledge that the second coming would take place in Missouri. And also that that's where the Garden of Eden was. So I really do want to hear from you guys. Please let me know what have you heard about Adam on Diamond. So let's have a discussion in the comments. Let me know. Maybe we'll do a part two if I learn more things. Thank you guys so much for watching and extra special thank you to my patrons. I don't know what I would do without you guys, to be honest. Thank you so much for your support and extra special thank you to Amy, Doug Davis, and NJ for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. You guys are amazing. If you would like to support the channel, I would appreciate that so much. There are links to do so in the description below. And there are also links to all my other social media if you want to see more content on different platforms. Thank you for being here and I will see you guys next time. Bye!